In this video, I'll show you an easy, straightforward approach to painting non-metallic metal on gaming scale pieces. Today, we're painting one of the skeletons from the Cursed City box. And as usual, there's an extended one hour edit of this video available for my patrons over on Patreon. Let's get started. I'll start by base coating the miniature in a combination of wine red and black. This is going to add a bit of warmth to the shadows, but on this scale of miniature, it is pretty subtle. I'll then mix a bit of archaic turquoise and pale gray in order to brighten these tones a bit. This will create a dark, cool gray. And as you can see, I'm not adding too much of the pale gray just yet. It's way too bright for this early part of the layering process. Right now, I'm looking for a rough position of the brighter reflections in the armor. And usually with non-metallic metal, and especially models such as this one that has this line right down the center of the miniature, it's really helpful to think about making one side brighter than the other. This means that we'll have the main reflection on the side of the miniature that holds the sword and a secondary reflection on the side that holds the shield. You'll also notice that I'm painting everything with small lines at this point, and I really like this texture for non-metallic metal. I'll add a touch more of the pale gray and a little bit of the turquoise as well to brighten the mix. I'll then come in and touch an even smaller area in order to create some brightness on this main reflection. And as you can see at this point, the only difference between the two sides is uh, the size of the reflection, not so much the value just yet. The helmet has more of a cylindrical shape. That means that the reflections will follow this shape. On the top, we'll have a very thin line of light. And as we go down to the side of the head where the cylinder becomes bigger, we'll have a bigger line. And here it's incredibly important to be consistent with the light placement that you're painting on the chest armor. I'll then mix in a little bit of ice yellow, not a lot, just a little, to create an even brighter tone for highlighting. And take note of how the grays have temperature. I'm not just using black and white, I'm using blues and yellows to cool and warm up the tones. This approach not only looks better in my opinion, but it also helps to make the blend smoother. I'll mix in more and more of the ice yellow and in the end add a little bit of white for the final highlights. I want to take a quick moment to give a shout out to my patrons. I am incredibly grateful for the support I'm getting over on Patreon. And if you're interested in exclusive content, such as a one hour version of the video that you're watching right now, or any of my other videos here on YouTube, or maybe you're more serious about your painting and want to attend some private coaching where I can help you reach your hobby goals, or let's say you just want to hang out in the community discord and chat about painting and get some feedback from the community. Either way, my Patreon has got you covered. And I want to give a huge shout out to my community of supporters over on Patreon that you'll get to join. Thank you so much, you guys. And let's get back to the painting. Mm -hmm. 
once the armor starts to shine or look shiny, I notice that the bottom of the armor is probably too dark. So I'm going to start to think about the reflections coming from the ground. So I'll go back to some of my previous darker tones and start to paint in some shapes of the ground reflection. And here you can really start to think about the colors of the environment. So I'm adding in a little bit of brown and some greens in order to give the feeling of some reflection coming from the earth. You can also just continue painting with the colder grays and glaze in some color at a later stage. And eventually I go back to polishing some of the highlight. I paint in a bit more of that brown reflection here and also add the reflection of the edge of the shield. I'll then come in and glaze some of the turquoise over the secondary reflection. For the rust parts, I'm mixing burnt umber with some deep orange. This creates a variety of different orange tones. And when we're painting rust, it's kind of funny because we almost have to turn the process upside down in our head. Rust generally accumulates in the recesses and in deepened areas where we would otherwise have darker tones. Here we have to paint in some of those brighter oranges in exactly these spots. This happens because oftentimes water or moisture will collect in these areas. Also in places like around the rivets, you'll see some rust appearing there as well. Now you might be thinking, does it make sense for such a shiny armor to have pieces of rust on it? Wouldn't the whole thing oxidize as a whole instead of these strong concentrations of rust and other parts being super pristine? And the answer is, well, no, it makes no sense. But we're also talking about a skeleton zombie that has risen from the dead, so you tell me how that makes sense, and then we can discuss the finer chemical processes of iron oxidization. All jokes aside, the rust serves actually a little bit of a different purpose. The orange is essentially a splash of a complementary color in this scheme that's otherwise very blue. So the addition of these rust spots helps the scheme to get some visual interest and some contrast. During this process, I also decide that the size of the main highlight is a little bit too small, so I go ahead and extend that a bit. I do some more refinement and glazing around the armor, mostly of the turquoise around the area of the secondary reflection, and refine a bit more the brightest pieces on the armor. I go ahead and paint up the rest of the miniature, the cloak, the bone parts, and the base. And all there's left is to stick on a few of these moss tufts, paint the base rim black, and call him finished. Again, if you're interested in seeing this full process, you can go ahead and check that out on the Patreon link down in the description. And also, before you go, please let me know if there are any other models from the Cursed City box, or maybe from somewhere else that you'd like to see me paint in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and here is the finished skeleton.